Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia with Leaves Romantic Home. And in today's video, I am over the moon excited to share with you guys 20 DIY Dollar Tree French Farmhouse Decor Crafts. So it is becoming kind of late summer, thinking about early fall. So we're going to start planning some of those decor crafts coming up next week. But I thought I'd share with you guys a fun compilation video of some of my favorite French Farmhouse Decor Crafts. I do love to decorate kind of a French Farmhouse style. Really, I love all different styles of decorating, but I thought this would be fun to share with you guys to inspire you all if you're kind of in that in between late summer early fall thinking or just want to do a neutral palette decor thank you guys for being again for being here um i would love to invite you all to subscribe to my youtube channel if you subscribe punch the bell and click all it will update you every single time i post a new video don't forget to follow me over my livia's romantic home facebook page i'll leave a link in the description box below and without further ado let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns get out your glitter and paint and let's get to craft DIY with you and for this diy we are going to make a splatter screen swag so i'm going to take one of the dollar tree splatter screens and i'm just going to hot glue a little Little dab at the base of where the handle meets the splatter screen and begin to wrap it in some nautical rope. Once I had my handle wrapped, I decided to get really creative and grab some Dollar Tree greenery. I love the new greenery that they have out at Dollar Tree. It's so beautiful. So I'm adding a big generous dollop of hot glue and I'm going to hot glue this greenery to the middle part of the um, splatter screen. And I used a leaf to cover up the little stem. And then I added in some white lilacs or lavender. It's the white flower from Dollar Tree. And then a couple more bundles of this Dollar Tree greenery. And then using a zip tie, I'm going to zip tie the remaining florals to the splatter screen and you kind of want to maybe add in a little bit of vine um, around the edge of the splatter screen to cover up the silver part of that handle or you can also just kind of fan your greenery out just a bit and that will work as well the next step is to make a fabulous bow. Now I've had this burlap netting in my stash for so long now, and I decided to make a quick little Olivia bow. So to make an Olivia bow, you just take the loops of your ribbon and wrap them over on themselves. And I'll, I do have a bow video in my description box for you guys if you need um, more instructions on bows. And then I'm just going to take this uh, zip tie and I'm going to zip tie the bow to the top part of the splatter screen handle. And that's really going to cover up that space where you saw the greenery and the handle meet. And you're really barely even going to see the handle once we're done. And then you're just going to pull the loops out on whatever ribbon you choose. Now, you all get creative. You can add florals. You can just choose whatever ribbons you love. I decided to go with this Mackenzie Childs ribbon for my pattern ribbon. And I'm using my Easy Bow Maker to make a simple little bow. It's a six inch bow across. That seems to be the right size and I do love using my easy bow maker when my fingers get tired I do have neuropathy in my hands so it helps me out a lot you guys can find these at craft stores or also on deco exchange and then I'm just making a quick little bow I used three loops and then left tails at the base of it I'm going to use a zip tie to zip tie this on I've really discovered the magic of zip ties and I'm kind of addicted to them now don't forget to dovetail your ends by cutting an upward um, little triangle in either end of your bow and then you can attach your bow with another zip tie and if you fan your loops out you won't see any of the zip ties so the key to a successful bow is to use wired ribbon and give it a nice good fluffing so i'm play with my bow quite a bit and i wanted to show you guys another bow idea if you're doing for something for a wedding michael's has this beautiful white ribbon it has these really nice little elegant uh, polka dots on it and they're like a gold polka dot and that would be beautiful as well it's actually originally kind of what I thought I was going to use here but I only had enough for one bow and I wanted to do two of these splatter screens 
um, for both of the arches and these arches are from Hobby Lobby and their spring shop is all 40% off so everything in the spring shop section these arches and everything that I mentioned from Hobby Lobby I got 40% off so I thought that was a pretty good deal and I think they look beautiful I'm finally decorating my walls I know a lot of you guys have been commenting I need to decorate my walls and so I'm finally going for it I've also been doing some thrifting and I share with you guys in my next video how I'm using my thrift store items as well like the moon is the snow we don't care about the others you say this next Dollar Tree DIY is such a fun one. You're just gonna take some greenery and I took a piece of lamb's ear and then some of this Walmart lavender and using some zip ties, I just zip tied them together and then I used some smaller pieces of lavender left over from another project and I'm going to zip tie them on to the top. So you can use like a piece of garland. I just used the end of a lamb's ear garland but any greenery back behind this this would work. I wanted this to have like a French farmhouse chic effect. You know, when you look at magazines and they're sharing a lot of French decor or farmhouse decor, you'll see hanging bundles of lavender during the spring and summertime. Now I'm going to make a really cute little easy bow using my easy bow maker. You guys can grab these at the craft store or on Amazon or Deco Exchange, or you can just make a quick little bow by hand. I have a great little Olivia bow video I'll link down below for you. So for this bow, I am doing a little bit smaller. It's gonna be five inches across if you do have an Easy Bow Maker. And I do love the Easy Bow Maker because it saves my fingers after long stretches of crafting. Sometimes I just get lazy, honestly, and use it. But you guys can see, all you have to do is pop your ribbon in and it holds it right there in the center for you and then you have two beautiful little tails now listen don't forget to dovetail those ends using some scissors just pinch this and cut a little triangle in an upwards direction and if you guys can tell i still have not found my craft scissors i'm still using kid scissors i'm gonna have to make a point this weekend <laughs> to order some new crafting scissors Okay, so now I'm just going to fluff out my bow, and really that's the secret to your bow. You've got to give it a good little fluffing. I like to fluff it after I get done making it, and then once I get on to my project. And I have been loving using zip ties for the center of my bow. It's got a really great hold. You do want to, though, use something to cover up the center of it, unless you're really going to give your bow a nice fluffing and you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm just going to pop it onto the top of my little hanging lavender bundle, and this is probably the easiest floral that I have done all season. So you guys can totally do this, especially if you're a newbie arranging florals, or maybe you just don't want to do any big floral arrangements, but you do want a pop of color and a hint of springtime French farmhouse lavender somewhere. Now I'm using this little Dollar Tree smaller ribbon, and I'm just going to um, cover up my zip tie by winding it around the top of this. And then you can use that same ribbon to make like a little hook that your um, pretty lavender can hang from. I have this cute little shelf in my dining room. And I was looking at it and I didn't have anything hanging on the little hooks. And I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be cute to do like a little French farmhouse chic look? I have some vintage dishes that I picked up. Now, here's another fun idea. I don't think that these normally would be a hanging like arrangement bundle, but we're going to use some of this Dollar Tree longer white blooming flower some Dollar Tree greenery, and then just some of these bits and bobs of lavender that I had left over. Again, just kind of creating that fresh um, farmhouse appearance. And like it's just been freshly picked from my garden, even though it's faux, but hey, there will be no mess or fallout from these. So again, I zip tied everything together and then just using this cute little piece of ribbon, I'm gonna tie off the end and then also create a little hook for it. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with y'all how to make a super adorable wooden photo frame box. Okay, so I found these really neat 3 by 5 I believe, photo frames, and I'm just removing the original um, paper. I'm going to line that up with this craft paper that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. It's a black and white buffalo check plaid. I'm really kind of moving into some neutrals now that we've hit summer. I want my decor to go a little bit further and transition into some fall decor eventually so I am using this black and white buffalo check plaid plus it's super adorable and I still really love it so 
anyway, I did um, just remove the backing from this and popped the little um, black and white buffalo check plaid back into it and then added those tabs back down. And then I did take my wire trimmers and I just removed um, the little stand that the photo frame would go on. And here's how it should look once you get done with that. And then I'm gonna make three more of these to create my box shape. So now I'm just going to take my little photo frames and using some hot glue, I'm going to hot glue them together. Now, be careful when you're doing this. You want to try to align one side to the outside and one side to the inside and make that match the opposite side. Um, and that will make your box more square. Um, and you guys can see I accidentally glued one upside down, so I did have to detach that. <laughs> <laughs> and start back over with that side. So anyway, listen, you guys, I have plenty of flops. Give yourself grace, keep going for it, have fun and get creative. Now I did want to create a base for this. So to do that, I took one more of the picture frame. So I used five total for this project and I just took and removed um, this little hardware on the front. And you could actually do that to the other sides of it. Um, if you didn't want that little hardware on the base. And then again, I did just remove the little backing and then I'm going to just hot glue that directly on top of that and that creates your box. Next thing I'm gonna do is pop some styrofoam in to my little photo frame box and then I'm gonna add some of this greenery. So Dollar Tree is carrying these little mini burlap greenery bits and they really are nice to have. I've never really got some, but a friend of mine sent me some, so thank you. And then I did pop a little piece of um, just some of that lamb's ear into the center of it to give it a little bit more of a farmhouse vibe. So here is how it looks popped in to my little setting here. So fun and fabulous on a budget. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna use some of these four by six picture frames and some of these little galvanized metal signs and then some craft paper and some paint. I'm going to remove the backing from these little um, I guess it would be like a picture frame or a sign and I'm just going to chalk paint the outside of it in this elephant gray chalk paint. I'm actually loving this color right now. I remember using some of it last year during the fall to decorate with and you guys could really use these picture frames as is but I do love the look of this. It kind of matches in with my home decor a little bit better so I'm just adding two layers of chalk paint and then I did let it dry for about 30 minutes in between. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is take some of this paper from Hobby Lobby and it looks kind of like um, the beadboard or just has kind of a little bit of a farmhouse look and I'm gonna pop that back into the original frame. And then once I had the paper popped in, I just used some of these galvanized letters and these are kind of like an oversized jumbo galvanized letter. And I just took the original little clothespin that was on here and popped that on there. And then there you guys have that. Okay, so I decided to make it like this extra long kind of mantle sign and I did hot glue these together. Now I will tell you that one of them came apart. So. I think if I had it to do over again, I would use some E6000 glue with the hot glue because it didn't give me as sturdy of a hold as I would have liked, to be totally honest with you guys. So just a little note here, and you wouldn't even really necessarily have to glue them together if you were putting them on a mantle um, or hanging them. You could just maybe hang them really close to each other. But I mean, they did stay glued together, but they just weren't as sturdy as I wanted them to be. 
I did reinforce them with some popsicle sticks on the back. So if you guys have some ideas on how to keep this together a little bit better, I would definitely love to know. Um, maybe I could have put popsicle sticks running long ways and then put one on top. Um, or maybe actually, you know, I just thought of this actually, what I probably could do would be to take some poster board and cut that out and just glue some poster board to the back of that. And that might really help stabilize it just a bit. But I did pop it in to kind of this little um, plant stand and then I put some greenery back behind it and then even added in some sunflowers. So I thought that was pretty fun and I just thought it looked really cute like something you would see at Kirkland's and plus it says happy family home which I absolutely love. Um, I love my home and I love my little family so... I love y'all and I hope you're inspired by this craft. You don't necessarily have to use these original frames that I found at Dollar Tree, but you could really use any frame and just string a piece of little twine and some cute little um, clothes. For this next DIY, I want to share with y'all how to make an amazing Dollar Tree hula hoop wreath. That's right. I grabbed a hula hoop from the Dollar Tree and then I'm using this burlap and I just added a little layer of hot glue for my first part of the burlap and then I'm just going to wrap the hula hoop in the burlap. Now think about this, you guys could always just cut strips of fabric, which I have totally done before, um, if you wanna do like a different look. So if you had an old white sheet, you could cut that and cover that with it if you don't have the burlap. You could also spray paint it as well. Now Dollar Tree is carrying these super nice longer picks. I found them at my store yesterday. I grabbed them, I knew I wanted to use them for a wreath. And so I'm just taking them and putting these long stems end to end. You guys could really grab any floral greenery stems um, and you guys could use anything on this wreath that you prefer. I wanted to do a greenery look. I've done a lot of floral wreaths this year and I plan to do more, but I thought for this one it would be fun to do just greenery. So I used several bundles and then to really make sure they're secure on here, I'm using zip ties to attach them. I'm going to put this out on my back patio area and I want them to stay on. Now here's a little hack that you guys can use with any floral stem bundle, you can take it and bend it in half and you don't even have to cut it. And that way it's sturdy on there together and you guys can always reuse it for another project. And again, I'm zip tying these in multiple places underneath the leaves um, further up so you don't see the zip ties. But right here, I'm gonna add a really pretty bow. And this last set of greenery and little white flowers were from Walmart and they were about three bucks a bundle. The next thing I'm gonna do is grab some leftover Christmas ribbon. This is Buffalo check plaid ribbon, but you guys use any ribbon that you love. Choose any color or pattern that you love that you're decorating your home with. Dollar Tree even has some cute ribbon as well. I wanted to go for Buffalo check because I'm at the end of the roll and I need this roll gone, but I also thought it'd be super cute to go in with lemon decor. I'm using my easy bow maker and I'm making about a six to seven inch bow. You just push your ribbon in there side to side, side to side. It's so seriously easy, you guys. Um, and I'm just gonna trim that off and then I'll show you a quick little hack too about how to make some easy tails. So to make some tails, you can grab an extra strand of that ribbon, however long you want it for your tails and tie your bow on with that extra strand of ribbon. That's just something I came up with on the fly. I thought it would be great and it actually works pretty good. Um, so then you can give your bow a nice good fluffing and this is going to be the secret to any great bow is playing with it. You really want to pull those loops out. I'll even take my hand and just like push it in there. Don't forget to dovetail your ends by cutting an upward triangle in the ends of your ribbon and voila, you have a fabulous hula hoop wreath on a budget with a little bit of greenery and a pretty bow and nobody would ever know, at least I don't think anybody would ever know that that is a hula hoop. These types of wreaths are so in style right now and I can see why they're really cute. They're easy to hang, they're easy to do. They don't take a lot of product. So if you need something quick and easy for the summer, this is definitely a go-to. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a two-tiered stand using two Dollar Tree burner covers, these little wooden beads, and a couple of candlesticks from Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to take these little wooden beads and I'm going to hot glue them um, and kind of space them evenly around the burner covers. And I'm just using regular hot glue for this because I felt like that was sufficient 
to keep the little um, wooden beads onto my burner cover and they held fairly well you could always add a dab of e6000 glue if you were concerned about them not holding the next thing I want to do is I am going to use e6000 glue to glue these candlesticks together so I'm going to take some E6000 glue and then I'm also going to use just a little bit of hot glue, but I don't use the hot glue on top of the E6000. So I kind of left some little spots where I didn't add E6000 glue and wherever I did not add the E6000 glue, that's where I'm adding the hot glue. So you can just see me kind of dabbing it on there. The reason I use both glues is because the E6000 glue um, is a bonding glue but it does take a while to dry and so the hot glue will help the bonding glue stay together so your candlestick won't wobble around sometimes the e6000 glue if you only use that it will have a tendency to kind of slide a little bit but suit your fancy this is how i felt like it would be best so now i'm going to use e6000 glue again and again i'm leaving spots for where the hot glue can go and i'm going to use both of these glues to then hot glue my candlestick to the other side of my burner cover the side that i didn't put the little legs on because i want feet to kind of hold my burner cover up and then this is where I'm going to make my stand. And then I'm going to repeat that process again here with the E6000 glue and the hot glue. Again, not putting the E6000 glue everywhere, but just leaving some spots where I could add some hot glue. <laughs> so I hope that's making sense. But anyway, once you guys have these steps completed and your little project is together, I like to give it about 30 minutes to kind of just hold on there together but the e6000 glue does take 24 hours to completely dry just a little side note there the next thing i wanted to do was to take it outside and give it a quick little dusting of spray paint and i love to use the rust-oleum 3x spray paint it's about three dollars and 97 cents at walmart but i feel like that that's worth spending a little bit more over just the one dollar spray paint because it really gives you really good full coverage i was able to do this and several other projects um, and this did take two coats so i flipped it over and i gave it a really generous spray paint on one side and then i flipped it back over and spray painted the other side that way the little spots underneath could be seen as well and here's how it is popped in to my little spring easter setting i think these are so fun to make now the burner covers are sturdy but they're not like you know glass sturdy so you might want to be careful like putting tons and tons of weight on it i think it's fine you know display some pretty teacups and just some really beautiful little trinkets but i think it's a fun great idea for the next dollar tree diy i want to share with you all how you can take and repurpose some of your extra fourth of july decor I did make some really fun 4th of July crafts and I did use some of these similar to this, but I bought a couple extra to craft with. So I'm taking this Waverly white chalk paint, I mean, sorry, gray elephant chalk paint, and I'm just gonna chalk paint this little star and also this little red, white, and blue flower. And again, I love them in their original form. I love all of this and I do have um, some decor like this in my home, but I did buy these extra ones just to craft with. So and now I'm just going to cover them in a good old fashioned layer of heavy duty chalk paint. Now, I do believe I used three coats for these and you guys may want to seal them with a layer of Mod Podge as well just if you want it to be a little bit more durable and a little bit more long lasting a lot of you guys ask why i like to use chalk paint i love it because it's really fast drying and i'm a super impatient crafter <laughs> so the next thing i did was i just took some white paint on the sponge brush and these sponge brushes from dollar tree are really awesome i'm kind of getting hooked on them and i'm just brushing this with a sponge brush and voila i think that gives a really neat look to this it looks like something that you guys would see you know more at a high-end decor store um, and so I just thought that was really cute. And so I did brush both of these white and I'm kind of doing a dry brush technique where, um, you just get a tiny bit of paint on your brush and then you kind of just dry brush it on there. So you don't have like a heavy duty layer. Um, and you can even dab it off on a paper towel. And then I did just take some wire cutters and clip those down. Now I'm going to make a quick little easy arrangement by popping in the styrofoam and some lamb's ear into the center of this farmhouse picture. And then um, once I did that, and the lambs here was a little bit long, and these were probably maybe oversized for this picture, but 
oh gosh i just think this picture is so cute and it's a picture not a picture <laughs> but anyway there we have that a fun little easy craft you guys can do and it's a great way to repurpose some of your extra um, decor really for any season you guys should be able to find some of those flowers if not in the red white and blue and the other ones and again i am very patriotic and i do um, love all of my patriotic decor but i did buy these to craft with so i thought that would just be a fun idea for you guys For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna use one of these mini wreath forms and just some hot glue and this Dollar Tree kind of burlap wired ribbon. And I am just going to use the burlap wired ribbon and wrap it around this tiny little mini wreath frame. Um, I've had these on hand and I actually wanna save them once I get done using this craft because I think they would make a great little snowman craft. So if you guys see these in your Dollar Tree, grab a set of them, put them aside because we're probably gonna make snowmen out of them once Christmas time time comes. So I'm just wrapping this um, in my little uh, small wreath form here and then I'm going to just trim that off. And I found also these little cotton stem like pieces. So they're selling these in a two pack at Dollar Tree. And I thought those would be fun to add to a little mini wreath. I'm not sure what else really to do with them besides use them on a wreath. So you guys have to let me know. I'm kind of at a loss with these little guys, but I'm making a cute, easy a little bow here. And I'm just gonna tie it off at the center. So to make this bow, you just loop the ribbon over on itself and then tie it in the center. And so then I'm gonna trim that off and then tie that on to the top of um, this little wreath form. And so then there you guys have that. And then now I'm just going to hot glue this over here like this. So these are those little cotton, they're called cotton pods, I guess. I just thought that would be fun for like a little easy farmhouse mini wreath. And this would be even something that you guys could do just so on a budget. And then um, I'm just gonna add some greenery pieces to either side of the wreath. Um, and then we guys could get really creative with it. Add a little sign, a little mini sign. I didn't do that. I couldn't find a great little mini sign that I wanted to use. So I just thought that this as a decor piece was a fun idea. And so here's how that looks there. And the other thing I want to let you guys know is I am going to be announcing my Cricut Joy giveaway on my socials today. So you guys check my socials, my stories. I'll have that giveaway winner announced. I always love to spoil you guys and I always love to ask you guys um, in this video or in any video, what was your favorite craft that I've created and um, which one will you be recreating? And also I love to ask you guys kind of an inspirational question. And so for this one, I want to ask you what has been your biggest blessing this year 2021 drop a comment down below what's been your biggest blessing um, so I think we could just light up this comment section with loads of fun and then um, all of that kind of sun stuff and I love you guys and I'm gonna pop in a clip of Benji Bear here real quick to share with you guys my little puppy dog This next at Dollar Tree DIY is so fun and easy, and all you need is a little wood plaque from the Dollar Tree Crafters Square section and some pretty paper and a little candlestick. So I chose this kind of black and white buffalo check plaid paper from Hobby Lobby. It's only 69 cents, and you can even find their paper on sale and get a better deal. I traced out the size of the plaque, and then I'm going to Mod Podge the paper to the plaque and then pop it onto my little candlestick. So this is a super easy, fun project. Anybody can do this. You guys could also use a little plate, but I just thought this plaque would be perfect. I have these cute little faux muffins that I love to decorate with that I get off of Amazon. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description box below.
The next step to this fun and easy adorable little craft is to add some Mod Podge. And don't add too much, but I will tell you that wood takes a lot of Mod Podge because it absorbs really quickly. And so you kind of have to work quickly and also use quite a bit. But I did fine with this. I just had a little bit of a dibble dabble spill and then I just grabbed my little sponge and sponged it up. And then you can just add your pretty paper and look at how adorable this looks. I think it's so cute and it's so easy. You gotta love a cute, fun, easy craft. I also added some Mod Podge to the top of this. And again, you can use waterproof Mod Podge if you're going to be placing something that may get wet on top of your little stand, which would be really cute to do, like put it next to your sink and add like some dish soap or something fun like that. Now I'm taking this cute little Dollar Tree candlestick and I'm going to hot glue my plaque to the top of that and voila, I have this fabulous little cake stand that was a total budget project and then I decided to go one step further and add a little bit of black paint around the edges to just give it a little bit more of a farmhouse chic style. So it worked perfectly. It's so easy to use with these little brushes and it's a total budget. I love it. It's a total win for me as well. This next DIY is so fun and easy. So I'm just using this family is the heart of our home. This was left over from Valentine's Day and I do love this sign in its original form. I displayed it next to my coffee bar and it was perfect. And I actually picked up two, one to craft with and one to use as is. But I'm gonna take some sandpaper and I'm just going to sand off the letters to make them a little bit more smooth. My idea is to create a fun little sign to go next to my beehive. Again, this is the first year that I've ever really done any bee decor, but I think it's really cute and super trendy. I noticed Hobby Lobby had a huge honeybee section as well as Walmart put out bee pillows, which I actually did grab some bee pillows from Walmart. They're $5 in their outdoor garden section. I'm using them on my patio. They are adorable. Back to the sign, you guys. Okay, so I'm just going to use some Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge a nice little hearty layer on the base of my sign and then add my cute little honeybee sign part and this honey bee came from the farmer's market calendar that they did put out last season i found it in my crafting stash i was super excited <laughs> um to find it and i did do a blog post with a cute little honey bee printable as well so if you guys go to my livy's romantic home blog you can look at some of my printables i post on there so you guys can check that out i'll leave it a link in the description box for you guys below if you didn't happen to find the calendar um you can maybe use that printable it's not exactly like this, but it's pretty cute. I did add a layer of Mod Podge on top of my sign just to seal it in as well. Now this is the glossy Mod Podge, but you guys could choose matte or really whatever suits your fancy and floats your boat. I kind of thought about painting the frame black, but I decided just to leave it as is. Let me know what you guys think. I thought it looked nice offsetting the little lantern that I used on the other side. So that's kind of why I didn't go for black on it. But I do think that the frame would be really cute painted black or even white and then distressed with some black paint. I don't know, let me know what you guys think about that. But here it is popped into my super adorable little kitchen setting. I'm loving it. So fun and fabulous. Oh, and if you guys need a good new summer candle, lemon cake pop candle from Bath & Body Works smells phenomenal. It smells so delicious, like a lemon cake pop. <laughs> First DIY, I wanna share with y'all how to make some homemade chalk paint. So I'm taking one cup of regular latex paint. This is just white paint and then half a cup of baking soda. And I'm going to mix those together. You want to give it a really good mixy mix. And fair warning, this chalk paint will be a little bit grainy. The next thing I want to do is take one of these Dollar Tree galvanized tins. And I'm just going to begin to chalk paint the outside of the tin. Now I do love using chalk paint because it dries rather quickly and it does adhere to most surfaces rather easily. 
The next thing I'm going to do is let that dry and then I'm going to give it a whole nother coat of chalk paint and then you're gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna share with you guys this really cool um, rustic aging effect. I actually saw it on Our Green Acres. It's another YouTuber that does some amazing DIYs. Um, and so I just wanna take this graphic from graphicsfairy.com and I'm going to adhere the graphic to the outside of my little tin. And for these DIYs, I'm going for a French country look. So I went to graphicsfairy.com and I just typed in French country and they have a lot of free um, printables that you all can download to your computer and then just print off of your computer. And this is just on regular old um, printer paper. So I'm adhering this now to the outside of my little galvanized tin and then I'm taking actually an old makeup brush and I just dipped it in some gold paint and I'm going to kind of begin to give it like a layered rustic effect. So I'm adding in the gold paint and then the brown paint and that's going to give it some layers and make it look a little bit older but we're going to take it one step further with this really cool way to make something look rustic you're going to take your Mod Podge and you're going to Mod Podge the outside of whatever you have painted and then you're going to take some cinnamon and you're going to dust cinnamon on top of the Mod Podge but first you want to lay down a really nice layer of Mod Podge and that's going to give something for your cinnamon to attach to. Now the cinnamon is so cool. I love this technique and so you're just going to layer that on top of whatever it is you're trying to make look old and then give it a dusting. You'll let that dry and then you'll go over that with another layer of Mod Podge. And this is going to make this really cool vintage aged look. And I kind of dusted over the whole thing. Now when it came to the graphic, I did wipe a little bit of the brown off of that. I still wanted that to um, show through. But I wanted this to have like a really cool French country farmhouse look, something that's been aged. The next thing I wanted to do was take this little cone foam and make a topiary to go on top of my little um, rustic aged tin. So I'm taking this piece of foam and I'm hot gluing this Dollar Tree um, moss to the outside of it. Be patient with this. It does get a little bit messy. Um, you're going to want to have something underneath this craft, but just continue to add layers of hot glue and then more moss. And I did use an entire bag of moss for this project, but it comes out really cool. So once I had that finished, I'm going to use a wooden dowel again from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to pop a wooden dowel into the base of my little topiary. So you're going to push that into the base of your topiary and you also want to add some foam into your little wooden tin so I'm popping some foam into my tin and then that's going to give somewhere for me to push my little topiary into now Dollar Tree carries these really cool um, they're just kind of like greenery and I took two of these greenery garlands and I attached them end to end and that made one longer garland and then I attached the bottom part of the garland into my foam and then begin to wind it around um, my little uh, floral topiary piece and I am just so in love with this so it is a little bit of work with the painting technique but for only a couple of dollars you guys are going to have a fabulous topiary and these are so fun to use in your spring and summer decor and you could even through the holidays pop in some fall leaves and some little Christmas baubles if you wanted to. I'm going to take the remaining foam or the remaining moss excuse me and I'm going to layer the rest of the moss on top of my tin and I did use um, some hot glue and then I had one leaf pop off so I thought I would pop that under there. Now I made a quick little bow and added a dazzling jewel to the center of it. This was just my way of dressing it up. That is totally optional, but you guys know I love my bows and my bling. Oh, and I get all of my craft bling from totallydazzle.com. It's Natalie and she's a small business, which I love supporting small businesses. So I'm going to leave a link. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this sign and Wendy actually sent this to me. She sent me these two signs and then I already had this little tray on hand. I decided to take all three of these and I'm going to make a three tiered tray. Okay, so I just want to take some spray 
spray paint and spray paint the entire signs and the trays. And then I have a little dab of Waverly chalk paint left and I wanted to just go ahead and chalk paint them. I wasn't completely satisfied with the coverage from the spray paint. So, and I ran out of the chalk paint. So I ended up using my Dollar Tree $1 white acrylic paint, which it actually works pretty great, you guys. Now I'm taking two candlesticks and these were also painted white with some spray paint. And I'm just gonna use some E6000 glue and you wanna go around the rim, kind of add the E6000 glue and then add some hot glue. The E6000 glue will hold your project together permanently. The hot glue will help it stabilize temporarily. So it's a great little combo here. It's kind of magical. So I'm adding the tray and then the smaller one to the top. And now I wanna take some black paint and I'm just gonna edge it along the edges. I wanna make it look vintage farmhouse chic here by making it look kind of like an enamel tray. Now these tier trays are so expensive. So if you guys have some Dollar Tree um, little signs laying around that have seen better days or that you're just not inspired to use for decor, flip them over, give them a paint job, add some candlesticks and voila, you have a fun and fabulous tray for next to nothing, you guys. So easy to do. And these are so great to use in all of your seasonal decor, whether it be Christmas or spring or fall, which I am so looking forward to, or you could use them on a bridal table. Really the sky is the limit on how you want to use this. So I'm going to pop some of my faux muffins in here. And if you guys have not checked these out, I'm going to link some in my Amazon store. And then my cute little fresh eggs daily Dollar Tree sign. I'm going to share with you guys how to make these other projects over here. But how cute does this look? Now you can leave this set up as long as you want because the muffins are faux. I also added a romantic rose. And there you have a fabulous little centerpiece decor piece on a teeny tiny budget. Don't hesitate to look around your stash and see what you have that you can craft with and make something beautiful. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take some of these wooden beads and I'm just going to empty them onto a tray. And I want to take a pipe cleaner and string the larger beads onto this pipe cleaner. I want to make one of those pretty little beaded decor pieces that you guys see everywhere. And you also can buy the beads already painted, but I wanted to see how hard it was to paint these beads. So I strung them on to this piece of pipe cleaner, and then I'm just going to take some of this spray paint and spray paint them. And I ended up hanging them from a tree to really give them a good coating. Now it did take a bit of spray paint, but it's okay. I already had it on hand. Then I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm just going to hot glue the end of the pipe cleaner. And then I twisted it and kind of wrapped it and pushed it down on top of that. And that pretty much sealed my little bead off. You could also use wire. I'm using what I have on hand. So I'm taking some of that Dollar Tree um, twine and I want to make a tassel. So I'm just going to wrap it around my hand. And I also want to use some Baker's twine and add in some pretty brown and orange. You guys, I am thinking thinking of fall decor coming up. So I wanted to make something that would be really cute on a tiered tray. So I'm just adding in some baker's twine and basically I'm just homemaking a little tassel here. I'm gonna fold it at the top and then just use a piece of twine to tie it off at the top. Now you all could use yarn and I've even created these before using strips of fabric. So they're super easy to make, very customizable for whatever season you're decorating for. I'm gonna add a dab of hot glue and then I'm just gonna push the bead down and side of the tassel. Now there's maybe a different way to do this, but I thought this was a fun way and it worked for me. So I'm also going to take one of those cute little Dollar Tree tags and these pretty transfer um, letters. They say Bone Appetit and they're just like using a Cricut except for they come in sheets at Dollar Tree. So you don't even have to have a Cricut anymore. They have transfer letters at Dollar Tree. So definitely check those out. So I'm just going to add the bone and then the Appetit underneath that. And they're basically like a sticker and then you rub on top of it. I'm using this popsicle stick. Um, you could really use anything, a credit card, whatever suits your fancy. And then you just peel the transfer tape off and you have a beautiful little customized tag. I thought that would be fun to put on the end of this. I'm just going to tie this onto the end because if I want to take it off and make it more for a different season, that'll be super easy to do. So you have a beautiful decor piece. You still have a ton of beads left over. You could make several of these very easily and really decorate your home in that kind of fun farmhouse chic style. I'm giving it a little bit of a trim here and then I did use 
some twine to tie a bow and just add some twine to the top. That's also going to secure that pipe cleaner and um, give it a really nice finished look. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take these cute little wooden chick cutouts and I'm taking this wrapping paper that I had left over from Christmas and I'm going to trace around the little chick and then I'm going to cut it out. You can also find some buffalo check plaid paper at Hobby Lobby for a quarter a sheet. And then I'm just going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge the front of my ship, my little chick. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add the little piece of paper. Think you guys could use pretty much any little piece of scrap paper you have laying around, but this is gonna be so adorable. I really think the French farmhouse theme definitely has to have that little bit of buffalo check plaid. And I did get this wrapping paper on clearance at Target at the end of the season. So I added just a cute little jute twine bow, and then I just strung the little chicks on a piece of jute twine, and they're kind of hanging out of my little faux enamel tin. Eventually though, I am going to use these in my kitchen for my Easter decor. And I think they're fun because I can use them even past Easter. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, you're going to need one of these Dollar Tree glass bottles. And I just spray painted my bottle with some regular spray paint. And then I printed out these French graphics, again from graphicfairy.com. They are so amazing. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add some Mod Podge to the back of my little graphic label. You could really pick any label you wanted, but I definitely wanted to use some of these French sayings. If you just type in French farmhouse on graphicsfairy.com, it'll give you guys all kinds of different graphics that you can choose from. And then I'm going to take some of that same black paint that we used on the first project, and I'm going to dab my little sponge into it. Now, when you apply the paint in these projects, you want to kind of just have a tiny bit of paint on your sponge. So definitely dab it off on your plate before you get to going. But I love the this jar or this bottle actually it's from Dollar Tree and once it's painted and then you're going back over it with this black paint you can really see the beautiful detail on this this is the first time I've actually done this type of project on this jar and I was so impressed with the detail work with it oh my goodness the sky is the limit I really went to town distressing it and aging it and I feel like this is something you would see at Hobby Lobby for much more now I'm taking some of that Dollar Tree jute twine. I wanted to let you all know that you can find their jute twine in the automotive section and it comes three rolls to a pack so you get so much bang for your buck. But I'm just wrapping some jute twine around this little project and then I'm gonna tie a shoelace bow in the front. This is super easy. You just tie a, shoe, a bow like you're tying your shoelace, but not hard at all. And then I'm gonna add some of these cute little burlap rosettes. You can make these with some burlap, or I just ordered some off of burlapfabric.com, super easy. And then I'm gonna make a smaller one to kind of go in and around that same little spot. And I'm adhering it to the jute twine with some hot glue. How fun and fabulous is this? And I just used the little beaded um, garland that's hanging off of it that was at Dollar General this season so check that out but you guys can pretty much find those anywhere you could also DIY them and I also just use this beautiful little striped um, kind of tablecloth piece it's actually just a piece of fabric DIY I want to share with you all how to take some of those Dollar Tree terracotta pots and jazz them up or give them a little bit of a French country flair. So again, I'm using some of my homemade chalk paint and I'm just going to chalk paint these little terracotta pots and they're so nice. They absorb paint so well. I only needed to really use one coat with these and then I wanted to make them feel and appear a little bit more vintage and so I'm taking some of my Waverly antique wax and just a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of like distress them and then add a little bit of um, white paint on top of that especially if you get too much of the antique wax on top of that so anyway I'm going to do the other terracotta pot to match the first one and I always like to kind of rim on the inside because I may want to use them you know with flowers or something that you could kind of see down in the pot so that's just a 
little tip too. And then I'm going to take these beautiful French country images and I'm just going to cut them out. And again, I'll leave an album on my Facebook page with some of these really pretty images. And I'm just going to take and cut both of them out. And you don't have to completely cut all the way around like the scrolly design because it's a little bit intricate, although you could. <laughs> um, but I also used a little bit light layer of hairspray on top of the images and that way the image doesn't bleed when I'm doing the Mod Podge part. Part. So now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge on the back of my image and then I'm going to lay that down on the terracotta pot. Now this image was a little bit larger than my pot or it was the same size but you know then there's that little bump so you have to get really aggressive with your Mod Podging. <laughs> I guess that's what you would say. Um, but again I'm just taking that a generous layer of Mod Podge and laying that down. Now it did make it bubble just a little bit, but that's fine with me because it's supposed to be kind of French country and fun and, you know, just vintage -y. So I don't think it has to be completely perfect, although you could resize your image to make it smaller and fit underneath the lip of the terracotta pot if you wanted to. I just printed it as is. I'm a little bit impatient and plus this gave me more images on my printed piece of paper. So I'm going to do the other one in the exact same fashion and then I have two fabulous little um, boutique gorgeous pots on a budget and the next thing I wanted to do was just add a little bit of foam inside the pot I didn't even hot glue the foam I was just able to like cut it and pop it down in there and then add these pretty little lilac branches or lavender I think these actually might have been my lavender anyway I'm just popping these pretty little spring flowers into here again these are from Dollar Tree and then voila I have this fabulous little French kind mini pot on a budget you guys like really these would be at least six to ten dollars at your home decor store and then I'm adding in some pretty little moss again you can buy a bag of moss at Dollar Tree and I did share with you guys that topiary that's back behind these in one of my last videos so I hope you guys are inspired to do some spring dreaming and some pretty little planters. I really do a lot of fake florals inside right before the season starts because I'm patiently waiting for some of those really pretty flowers to be set out and even the herbs. I even bought real lavender last year and had that growing outside in my front yard. So. I'm really excited for the plant season. I don't know if you guys can tell, but we are going to be doing some real plants coming up very soon once my area gets past the kind of a freeze point. We've even had snow in April before, although we have really nice weather now, so I'm always a little bit hesitant to set in. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this large Dollar Tree gift box and I'm going to chalk paint the top of it white. I want to create a French farmhouse, um, a really cute, just little decorative box that I can use in my kitchen. And so I'm going to chalk paint the entire thing white on the top. And it did take two coats of chalk paint for this to be covered. And I will tell you, I really think this box is really super cute. Like I could see myself using it in my bathroom as decor or even my little um, beauty space. But for this particular DIY, I do want to do a French farmhouse um, look on this and so that's why I'm going to go ahead and chalk paint it white. So once I had it chalk painted all the way white I let it dry probably about 30 minutes in between coats and then I gave it one more coat of chalk paint. And then I went to graphicsfairy.com and I did print out a really cute little um, graphic to go on the top of this, which I'm going to share you with you in just a minute. But now I'm going to take some of that Dollar Tree contact paper and my idea is to line the edge of the box with the contact paper. And that way I'll have a really cute cool kind of like, I think this is like really French farmhouse chic contact paper. It's so pretty with the black and white and it'll just give it a little bit of a different look rather than painting the entire thing white. And you could go even a step further and add contact paper to the inside of it or the bottom, but I really didn't feel like that was necessary. And I do struggle with contact paper just a little bit, so I felt like this was sufficient um, enough. So again, I'm just tracing the edges of my box and then getting the right size contact paper and then adding that contact paper to the edges of my little box. And that was also giving the top part of my box plenty of time to dry in between paint coats. 
and you're not going to see the top lip. You can tell up here. So it's just fine to go ahead and pop that in here. You guys can make some really fun boxes like these, especially if you have room at the top of your kitchen cupboard and you just wanted something fun and decorative. Now the next step is to add a layer of Mod Podge. This was the Mod Podge that I used in that rustic cinnamon technique. So it did have a little bit of brown to it, but that was fine because I'm actually going to add another layer on top of that. And this little graphic was from graphicsfairy.com. It's free. You guys can go to their website and type in French country and you'll find all different kinds of French country um, graphics and ideas. And I will um, try to post these on my blog as well. And that way you guys can just go right there and you can click on it and download it that way. Um, but now I'm just using some little Dollar Tree embellishment with this pretty little ribbon and I'm gonna add that to the top and the bottom of this. And that's just gonna kind of jazz things up a little bit. I love kind of to embellish things and make them look just even a little bit more fabulous in my opinion. Now I'm taking these cute little burlap rosettes and I'm just going to hot glue them to the corner. I've shared with you guys before how to make burlap rosettes, but you just take the burlap, wind it around and make a cute little rosette. These actually came from a burlap site, burlapfabric.com, I believe. And then of course I had to add a little jewel to the center of that and voila, I have a fabulous little Dollar Tree box that looks like something, you know, that I bought at a boutique or a high-end decor store and we made it for next to nothing, especially if you guys have some of these little bobbles and goodies already in your craft stash. So for the next DIY, I'm actually going to use a frame that I found at Walmart. Walmart has a section where they have any frame for $4. And so I chose this kind of really nice scrolly frame. And for this one, I'm going to use um, some chalk paint. This was actually a DIY that I did last year, but I wanted to share with you guys kind of how this frame looked originally and then share with you guys what we're going to do with it this year. So part of this DIY is from last year and then part of it is from this year because I do like to repurpose and reuse my DIYs as I move through the seasons, especially when it comes to frames. And so the white chalk painted frame looks super adorable, but I did want to just do something different. And so once I had it all the way chalk painted for this original one, I just let it dry. And then I did just stress it gently with a bit of sandpaper. You guys can always use also a bit of um, antique wax, which the Waverly antique wax is also sold at Walmart. And I do love using that as well. So get on there, have some fun with it, use whatever colors you love. Now imagine this frame in a turquoise or a pink or whatever vintage style color that you love. Go for it, have fun with it, and get creative. I lose my breath whenever I see you You stole my heart, what is it that you do? Now, what I wanted to do with this frame was give it a little bit kind of of a gilded effect. So this would be like a French country um, kind of gilding effect with this beautiful gold paint. So again, this gold paint is um, from Arteza Paints and I did buy this off of Amazon. They have really, really beautiful, realistically looking or realistic looking gold paint. And so I'm adding in the gold paint and then I'm layering a layer of brown paint underneath it because I want this to look um, fancy and kind of gilded and a little bit ornate, but not completely new. I don't want it to look, I want it to have a French country look, which French country has a really aged look. And so the next thing I want to do is pop in this cute little rooster. Oh my goodness, this was so cute. And again, I found this off of graphicsfairy.com. They have a ton of free printables. Type in French country and have fun printing out little uh, printables. This is just on regular computer paper. 
I pop my little fancy rooster in and there you have it. A fun, fabulous decor piece for very little money on a budget and it looks like something you would find at a boutique. It could go easily into your kitchen decor, dining room, or even popped into just any little space that you kind of wanted to add that little French country flair to. You set my world on fire And then for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just going to take this little Dollar Tree kitchen sign, which I actually think is really cute. I'm going to keep it, um, but I wanted to add this little French um, farmhouse saying. And in fact, if you all are French and you know what this says, definitely comment and let me know. I'm not for sure what it says, but I did get the graphic off of gra graphicsfairy.com. Um, all you guys have to do is just search a French farmhouse and you'll find some really pretty little sayings and sign additions. So I just popped it into this white Dollar Tree frame and I add it into this beautiful little um, set up here and I think it's just looking so fun and fabulous. I love this cream and black ticking fabric. I got it from burlapfabric.com but I've also seen it at Walmart if you all need any um, French country kind of curtain or fabric or whatnot. So for the next DIY I'm actually going to upcycle some of these Bath and Body Works candle lids. I'm going to take some of this chalk paint and again I used several different coats. I will suggest that I do like the Waverly chalk paint better than this kilns chalk paint it seems to have a bit more coverage so then once I had my little lids chalk painted I'm gonna use some of this Dollar Tree contact paper and I'm just gonna trace around the lids what I want to create is a coaster for my living room I cannot wait to redecorate for spring so definitely check back next week for spring decorating I will have a huge DIY video posting as well on Saturday but I'm just gonna go ahead and trace around the little contact paper I want it to fit the very top of the lid. I'm just going to add it to the top of the lid. You guys, really the sky is the limit. Originally, I thought I was going to Mod Podge a French graphic onto this, but I spied a little bit of contact paper that I needed to use up. I've been using this pretty much everywhere. I used it in organizing my kitchen and laundry room. I just think it's so pretty and I love the black and white. I think it's so French country um, and just so fun and fabulous. So for the next DIY, I want to make a French farmhouse Olivia bow. So I'm just just going to start and I'm going to measure my first ribbon which is this burlap ribbon all my ribbon is wired and I'm going to measure it 16 inches long and then I'm going to loop loop the ribbon over on itself um, four times you want to have four ribbon loops I hope that makes sense and then once you get your four ribbon loops you can just pull it out and leave a little tail and then you're going to find your center and you want to fold it over in the center and then you want to take some really nice sharp scissors and cut a tiny notch in each side of your ribbon. The notch is going to help the pipe cleaner grip onto your bow and you can pull out the loops and make it a little bit more boutique fabulous. You can set your ribbon aside or if you're making a big bow like I am, you can go ahead and grab your pipe cleaner and twist that on, but don't twist too much because you do wanna be able to add more layers. So I'm gonna add multiple layers to this bow and my idea for this bow was to make kind of an all season bow so something that doesn't have really any specific colors to it. Now the next layer of this bow I'm going to measure out to be 14 inches and I'm going to use this buffalo check plaid ribbon. You can get a big 50 foot roll on Amazon or Hobby Lobby or really any of your craft stores will carry some sort of buffalo check plaid ribbon. Now I bought this ribbon during quarantine and I could only find it on Amazon so I think I paid about 20 bucks for it which is a little bit too much. Uh, the best time to get it really is when Hobby Lobby puts out their Christmas decor Core, you can get it in their Christmas section and then use your 50% off coupon. That's just a little hint hit and tip but again you're going to go ahead and loop the ribbon over on itself four times so you want two loops on each side and then you're going to find your center again and go ahead and trim that tail off 
fold your center right here, find it in the center, grab your scissors and just cut a little notch. So you're gonna continue adding more ribbon and you're just gonna do the same process. You're gonna loop it over on itself four times and you're gonna do each one two inches apart. So your largest bow is gonna be 16 and then you go down to 14 and then 12 and then 10 and then eight and then six and however small you wanna get. I think I did five ribbons on this one and it doesn't have to be perfect you guys sometimes I'll just eyeball it but I have been trying to measure it to give you guys a little bit better of a tutorial So for this next section, I'm using the burlap colored ribbon. Again, this is about 12 inches long and you're gonna loop it over on itself four times. Find that center, notch it in the center. Now just tiny notches because you don't want your bow to fall apart on you. And then you're gonna add that to your next section. And then for the next ribbon I chose was a black and white striped ribbon. This one I also got off Amazon again I would probably though look on Hobby Lobby now. You can get ribbon off Hobby Lobby and they'll ship it to you. So I've actually been kind of looking at that for buying my ribbon. We don't have a Hobby Lobby in our town, but if you spend $50 or more, you can get free shipping. So I'm kind of adding some little things to my cart, things that I might be able to use for an all season idea. I am trying to come up with some ideas for you guys that are kind of more of an all season. So this is one of them, kind of an all season bow with lots of neutral colors. Now go ahead and notch that ribbon. This was 10 inches along again and then you just loop it over on itself four times. So continue to have fun with it, layer those ribbons, and always give yourself grace. Last but not least, I'm using this Harlequin ribbon. And again, I do believe that they have this at Hobby Lobby. This was the smallest of the ribbon. So it was about six to eight inches here. And I'm just looping it over on itself, trimming it off, and then finding that center and notching the center. And once you have everything done, you can go ahead and add them all together. And then my favorite part of all is the fluffy. Now I love, love big bows and I cannot lie, comment and let me know if you are here with me and you're here for it. I love doing tons and tons of layers. I think that's what gives something that really pretty boutique finish, but you guys do what feels comfortable for you and what you have in your budget for a ribbon and whatnot. But I think that adding really big bows in my opinion, this is what I love, gives it that really beautiful high-end feel. And it also is a great filler for flowers. A lot of times flowers can be really expensive, but adding a really huge bow can take up a whole section of a wreath. So just keep that in mind. So now you're just going to continue to fluffy up your bow really well. And you want to continue to pull those loops out. You can see I'm pulling and twisting and arranging and just keep playing with it until you get it to where your eye really loves it. Now that my bow is all finished, I'm going to add it to this grapevine wreath base. I believe it's a 14 to 16 inch base that I found at Walmart. I have reused this base forever, so it even has a little bit of hot glue on it, but I'm just using a pipe cleaner to attach my pretty bow with. Now I'm taking this garland from Michaels and I'm gonna cut the garland up because I need some greenery and I don't have any greenery and I don't wanna run out and spend money when I already do have some garland here. So I'm just adding hot glue to the end of the garland um, 
pick here. Now use whatever greenery you have on hand, but I want to add the base of this as my greenery. Again, I want this to be more kind of an all season wreath, something that I can pop out whenever I'm between seasons and I don't want, you know, any wild colors going on. So I'm adding a dab of hot glue and continuing to work with the greenery. The next thing I want to do is add in this pretty little frame with this rooster picture. These are both from Dollar Tree. It's actually one of those skull Halloween frames that I had painted white. And I decided to go ahead and add a little bit more greenery over here to the top. I think a fun way to frame out a smaller sign is to add a frame back behind it. Make sure it's really lightweight, which that little white frame is. Now I'm continuing to clip off my greenery and add more greenery. And you guys asked to see the entire process, which I guess sometimes I think I make really weird faces and um, just odd things I feel happen sometimes when I'm making a wreath. And so a lot of times I'll cut some of that out, but here it is in all its full glory, me with my weird faces making <laughs> wreaths. <laughs> so I'm just continuing to trim off the greenery pieces and add them. And I'm kind of staggering them. So I'll add one to the base and then one to the top and then and take a step back to see how everything looks. Now I'm taking that lightweight Dollar Tree frame and I'm running a pipe cleaner through the base of it and then up in and around the wreath. Again, this step is probably optional and you really couldn't see it a whole lot once I actually had everything on there, but it did peek out. And a lot of times when you're doing wreaths, those layers of dimension are really what makes the eye um, just have a lot to look at. And you guys know I really love over the top designs. So now I'm adding that cute little Dollar Tree rooster picture frame. I picked this up last year sometime. It was kind of a rare find, I feel, <laughs> but always keep your eyes on the Dollar Tree little pictures. Now I'd made a smaller little loopy bow and I'm going to add that to the base of this. This is really how I love to design my wreaths and then give it a good bit of a fluffing. I found some lamb's ear and I decided to layer that in as well. The one thing that I will tell you guys is I really wanted to keep this neutral, so I used different dimensions of greenery. So the lamb's ear was more of a mint green color, and the other greenery kind of trailed and had long stems to it. So that kind of helped things out, and you guys can probably see me disappearing from the frame in just a sec here. It's because I kind of have everything um, strewn about. <laughs> so sometimes when I'm working, it's definitely not perfect. Now here's another little trick to fill out a space. I didn't have as much greenery as I wanted to make it really full. So I'm just taking some of these ribbons and looping them over on themselves. And then I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and add those into the top. Again, that's just a fun little trick to also bring in some of the uh, layers of texture and ribbons to your wreath. And here it is, the finished product in all of its glory. I hope you all enjoyed the process and all my funny faces that I make when I'm making wreaths. And I also hope that you all are inspired to gather some materials that you might have about and make a beautiful all season wreath or wreath that you have been wanting to make. Be brave. You guys go for it. Have fun with it. Give yourself grace. And if you're nervous about using color, do something like this where you're just using a lot of greenery 
and some black and whites and some neutrals. So I really, really, really love this one. And I'm excited to find a spot for this in my home, but I also just might really enjoy this in my studio. So For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm so excited to share with you how you can take two of the Dollar Tree longer signs, and I'm using the love signs left over from Valentine's Day, but you guys could use any of their longer signs, or if you just have a long board on hand, we're gonna make a super adorable little farmhouse chic sign, but I'm taking two of these signs, and I'm just going to chalk paint them with some chalk paint, and I will tell you that I do prefer the Waverly white chalk paint. I had the Kilns brand on hand, so that's what I'm using. The next thing I did was flip this over, and then I'm just hot gluing popsicle sticks to the back to get my sign to stay on there nice and sturdy and then you'll have a nicer larger sign that you can make a larger like you know Hobby Lobby inspired little um, sign with so now I'm taking this our farmhouse little um, flag and this is a garden flag that you'll find in the Dollar Tree garden section and they're kind of rolled up but I'm gonna tell you these come out amazing when you add them to signs. They're so easy to Mod Podge. The Mod Podge fits really flat on there and you don't have any bubbles, which is incredible, which I love. So I'm just gonna trim off all the little edges of the sign and I did remove the plastic topper that normally would come um, on the garden flag sign. And then it fit fairly well on the two Dollar Tree signs that I glued together. So now I'm gonna use a generous layer of Mod Podge and this is just Mod Podge that I grabbed from Walmart. Dollar Tree also carries this Mod Podge as well. So this is just so easy. It's such a fun way to make a sign. I've also made a sign similar to this using um, the lemon uh, flag from Dollar Tree and they have a really cute gnome flag out as well. I kind of have a little thing for their flags and their signs, but I thought this little our farmhouse sign would just be perfect for my kitchen. I have little roosters in there, so it's kind of like a French country farmhouse chic vibe going on. So I just thought this would be so cute. So again, I added a layer of Mod Podge and then I did take some Mod Podge and run that over the entire thing to seal it off and also give it like a little bit of sheen. This is the glossy Mod Podge. They actually make glossy and matte, and they also make a waterproof Mod Podge if you guys didn't know that. So anyway, now I'm just taking this lamb's ear. You can grab a lamb's ear at Walmart for $2 a bundle, and I'm hot gluing it kind of end to end to the top of this, and then I'm just taking this ribbon and making a little loopy bow here. So you just take the ribbon, loop it over on itself. I wanted to make the bow somewhat small. Actually, you guys know I love big bows, but for this one, I didn't want it to overtake our sign. So here's a little hack for you. You can take a longer piece of ribbon that you have left over, tie it onto the center of your bow, and voila, you have a fabulous little bow, totally easy, and then you also have tails. So just give it a bit of fluffing. Again, I did get this ribbon at Hobby Lobby, and then you can hot glue that to the center part of your little sign. And this was so fun and easy to make, and I feel like it came out really super adorable for such a total budget project. And then don't forget to dovetail your ends. So by dovetailing, I mean cut a little triangle in an upwards direction to finish off your ribbon. Give it a nice boutique finish. You could also do like a little side cut as well. You just don't want your ends to be all floppy after you've spent so much time on your little beautiful project here. I did end up also adding some greenery to the base of this. Again, just using some of that lamb's ear, but you guys could use any greenery that you love. I thought since it was a farmhouse sign, I thought that the lamb's ear would look super adorable. And so I just hot glued that to the base and voila, I have a fabulous little farmhouse sign on a total budget. And I didn't have to use my Cricut, although I do love my little Cricut joy. Um, but look how cute this turned out. It goes perfectly in with my little kitchen hutch decor and just so fa fun and fabulous on a total budget. Mm -hmm. 
but the first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with y'all how to make a super adorable little side table using four Dollar Tree baseball bats from the kids section and then one of these little storage containers. So you're going to zip tie the baseball bats to the inside of the storage container. And I flipped mine up to where the little legs of the baseball or the arm of the baseball Anyway, the smaller part of the baseball was facing down. And so the places I was able to zip tie them the best to that I felt like it made the sturdiest were the top part of the inside of the basket and then the bottom part of the inside of the basket. And you could even add one more zip tie if you wanted, but it was pretty sturdy for being like a little plastic baseball table. And you'll never believe how cute and adorable this turns out at the end. I am absolutely crushing on it. It's gonna be so cute for my studio. So again, I'm just continuing to zip tie the little baseballs to the inside of the storage basket. Now, little note here, this is just kind of for a decoration. You're not gonna wanna put this out on your porch in the high wind, but if you had like a little corner, which I actually do and I might try it, you could put a cute little plant on it or you know a little side table for really any little space. But again, it's just mostly decorative. It's not going to hold a ton of weight or be like the most sturdy little table in the world. Okay, so here's how it looks kind of in phase one. And I did try it out and kind of push around on it just to make sure that those little baseball bats were gonna stay stable. And they actually totally did. Okay, so now I'm taking one of these extra large Dollar Tree canvases. They have these brand new out in the stores. I'm not sure, sure if I shared it with you guys in my last haul, but you guys are definitely gonna have to check for them. And then I used some E6000 glue to attach it, but I needed to have the project done quicker. So I ended up removing it and then using hot glue. Now I'm just spray painting it with my Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint and I will tell you I probably needed to use one more coat. The next thing I wanted to do was just kind of cover up the fact that it looked like a plastic storage basket so I dug into my craft stash I had actually three different types of nautical rope from the Dollar Tree so I'm really kind of just making like an ombre layer or really more of just a hodgepodge of rope. And so I'm just hot gluing the nautical rope on the lip of the outside of the storage basket. And I'm continuing to go around the table until I run out of this style of nautical rope. I believe I had two of the cream colored nautical ropes and then some more of the brown. And I also think that I may have not got my table completely straight on there i maybe should have measured it but it's a cute little table regardless have fun with it get creative and go for it i think it's a fun little decorative side table and comment and let me know if there's any ideas that you might have for giving it a little bit more weight i will tell you that whenever you use rope on your side tables like i did that other rope side table the rope actually gives it a ton of weight so here is how it turned out it's an adorable little side table i just thought it was so fun and creative it would be a great little project if you guys had a couple um, little of these goodies like you can find the majority of this at most dollar trees you could also use a dollar tree sign in place of the canvas so fun and fabulous on a total budget Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all a really creative way to make a wooden lantern, lantern using the Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks. Okay, so I used about two and a half um, boxes of little tumbling tower blocks and I used this little Dollar Tree vase and I'm just arranging the little blocks around the vase and you want to kind of put them sideways end to end and then you can take another block and hot glue that on top of the two adjoining blocks. And you're just gonna continue to go around in this motion and it's actually going to create like a, like a little vase. You could leave this around the vase or what I did was I ended up spray painting it and then popping a flickering flameless candle down inside of it. And it really turned out so cool, you guys. I have the perfect spot for it on my patio um, because I do have you know some darker colors out there. But the only thing I did notice that once I got to the top, some of the blocks kind of didn't want to sit as straight as possible. So I may have like missed a link somewhere and that kind of threw it off. 
But as I'm just working around, so you just like work and continue to add the blocks and it just gives this like little staggered effect, which <laughs> I know is so silly, but I think it turned out so cool, you guys. And you can kind of see through the different spaces on the blocks. And I did also make sure as I was starting this to kind of make sure I was I was giving, you don't want to um, hot glue them so tight to the glass that you can't get the glass out if you plan to do like I do and use it as a lantern. Um, and you could also, this just came to mind, you could find like a little base for it too and even attach it to a little base if you wanted. Um, but I did notice, you know, the first time I did kind of have to push on it to make sure I hadn't hot glued the blocks to the glass piece. So anyway, just have fun with it. Get creative. Um, you could also stain these blocks before you begin to add them. That's an idea as well. So many options and, you know, just, I just thought this was super neat. I can't wait for you guys to see the result. Now for the next at Dollar Tree DIY, I want to take these super adorable cow prints that I found at Dollar Tree. I shared this with you guys in my last Dollar Tree haul, and I'm going to take some of this kind of Mackenzie Childs inspired um, scrapbook paper, and you just grab this at Hobby Lobby, I believe it's a quarter, and I'm going to trace the little cow head out to make it the exact same size as the cow head picture, which was, I believe, an 8x10 frame. The next thing I wanted to do was just cut out the little um, background that was originally in this little cow picture. And actually the background is really cute. If you love um, decorating with aquas, this would be absolutely perfect and really adorable to use in your space. But I wanted to give it a little bit of kind of like a French country flair or Mackenzie Child's flair. And so I just thought that this paper would kind of jazz things up. The other thing you all can do is customize that paper to whatever decor that you're decorating with. So this is just a fun idea for you guys to take and make your own. The next thing I wanna do is just use some scotch tape and scotch tape my little cow head to the paper. And I'm going to repeat the exact same process on my other cow head because I wanted it to look similar. Um, and I think these are gonna be really cute in my kitchen. I can't wait to share with you guys how I display these. Um, I wanna do like a really cute kind of French country farmhouse kitchen decor for summer. Right now I have all of my Easter up, but in upcoming videos, you guys will want to look forward to some of that. Now the next thing I want to do is take some of my homemade chalk paint, which I shared with you guys how to make earlier in this video, and I'm just going to chalk paint the edge of the frame 
And this is a Dollar Tree frame, so you guys be careful with them when you remove things from them and when you're working with them. They can easily fall apart at the little seam in the corners. That's just a little side note. I've had it happen a million times to me. So in case that happens, you could always use some hot glue or E6000 to try to put it back together. But just be careful when you're painting them um, that you don't apply too much pressure. The next thing I wanted to do after I chalk painted both of my frames was make them look a little bit rustic. So each one of these frames had a totally different look to them. So I just wanted them to be cohesive. The frames weren't terrible, but I did just want them to match and kind of look like a little bit more aged. So I'm going in with some gold paint as well as some brown paint and I'm just kind of rubbing it on the edge of the frame. And really you guys can use any little stain or wax or whatever you have on hand to really kind of make it look a little bit aged. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is just wipe some of the paint off and that's also going to kind of distress it because this paint does have a little, or the, the tissue, I'm just using a paper towel, had a little bit of water on it. And that's kind of a fun way that you guys can distress chalk paint is by using a rag that's just gently wet or also a paper towel. Now, if you don't like these colors or you don't like the way that it's looking, go back in with more of whatever color that you care for the most. So I did go back over these again with a layer of white and then a layer of gold. So you just kind of want to keep layering on paint to give it that kind of antiqued look. So golds and browns, you can even add blacks, whites, creams. Those are kind of going to give it that French country farmhouse flair. And you all can do this really, they look really good when you're using like an antique or vintage style frame. And I'm going to share with that with you guys um, in this video, how to do one that has like a lot of detail because this layering of paint really shows through with a really nice scrolly design. And once I had layered in multiple layers of paints and I was satisfied with the finished effect, here is how my adorable cow pictures turned out. I think they're so fun and French country chic. And I really feel like they look a little bit more jazzed up with that kind of really neat paper behind it, especially if you guys are crushing on Mackenzie Childs, kind of like I am, you're gonna notice that their stuff is really expensive. And so I thought this was a fun way to give that kind of look, a French country or French farmhouse or Mackenzie Childs spring decor. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, why I'm going to take some of this craft paper and then some of this wrapping paper and I'm going to double layer these together. What I want to create is a really cute little fresh French farmhouse springtime bouquet. So I'm just cutting this off and then I want to go ahead and take some of the Dollar Tree onion grass and some of the Dollar Tree lilacs. You could also use some lavender. They have lavender at Dollar Tree or at Walmart. And then I'm just going to gently wrap um, my paper around my little bundle of flowers. I know it would be so nice to have a fresh flower bouquet, but I even think I love this bouquet more because it's real and it will stay fresh pretty much forever. So I'm just going to take this scrap piece of black ribbon and I'm going to tie it around my little bouquet. I'm going to just knot it here. Super easy. This isn't hard at all. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut an upward triangle to dovetail my ends. That's going to give you that really beautiful boutique finish. And I think this is so gorgeous on a budget. You would definitely find this at Home Goods or TJ Maxx for much, much more. Check your local dollar tree for some faux flowers. I think bundling the same flower together gives it more of a high-end look. So taking the onion grass and putting that in the back and then I believe I used three bundles of lilacs and I ended up also popping some faux lavender into this and then I'm just taking the Dollar Tree jute twine and also one of those cute little French farmhouse labels that I printed out. I punched a hole in the front and then I'm just going to string my little jute twine through here and it looks like it is somewhat handmade but also kind of fabulous like maybe you got it from a boutique store or a fresh farmer's market which I absolutely adore. 
so fun and absolutely fabulous, you guys. Definitely, what are you thinking about this? Do you do a French farmhouse chic theme or French country or any type of farmhouse? I feel like there's so many different ways you could spin the farmhouse look, whether it be modern or French farmhouse or farmhouse chic or French country. I think it's so fun though, just to add, add those little touches of country in to the decor. It really gives my decor that homey feeling, but I like to add kind of a French chic spin on it. So thank so you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. I'd love to share with you all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. I truly believe that y'all don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous event home. And for everybody that comes back and loves on me, I thank you so, so much for being here. Um, I'm a one woman little show and I just love to craft and decorate and share that with you guys and share kind of the art and love of homemaking and um, just encourage you all that no matter where you're at in your crafting and decorating journey or really in your life journey in general, keep up the good work and keep putting one foot in front of the other. Um, I truly believe that every day that we're given is a gift. And so we, our eyes pop open. And it's like, how can we use this day in our lives in a service to others and as a gift? So thank you guys for being here. I love y'all so, so much. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. I'm wishing you a gorgeous, flat, fabulous, blessed day. And remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. Talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.